The United States strongly condemns the steps that have been taken by Egypt's interim government and security forces. We deplore violence against civilians. We support universal rights essential to human dignity, including the right to peaceful protest. The president has put his thumb down on the scale on the side of the Muslim Brotherhood. This criticism of the Egyptian government, I think, will resonate all over Egypt, and it will not do us any good. Barring some huge shift on what we're seeing on the ground in Egypt, I think you're going to see that aid stay in place. The bottom line, Charles, could the president really cut off this aid? I talked to Ambassador Bolton about it, and he said, really, a lot of this is it's just tribute, if you will, to the Egyptian military to uphold their end of the Camp David peace accords. Well, he could. It wouldn't be a lot of money. And given the fact that the Gulf Arabs are giving the military regime in Egypt right now 12 billion, so ours is about one-tenth of that, I don't think the, the, the issue here is the money, it's the symbolism. And I think Obama, I don't say this often, I think he got it right today in terms of threading, threading the needle. Uh, look, this is an old issue. We faced this in the Cold War. On one side, we have an army coup. On the other side, a government, a far left the government, tending uh, towards totalitarianism. And these are choices that we had to make. They're always, uh, you know, the, the choice of the, the, the better of the two evils. Uh, here, you don't want to show support for a crackdown of this. So I think he said the right words in deploring the violence, calling for inclusiveness and all this. But he knows it's not going to have any effect. This is now a showdown between the military and the Brotherhood, the two strongest institutions in the country over who's going to govern. There is not a middle way. We're going to have to live with one or the other. And I think he didn't want to put the thumb on a scale which would hamper the government because I think the alternative of the Brotherhood in control would be a catastrophe for Egypt, for the, for the minorities in Egypt, for the women in Egypt, and for the United States. So even though he has to say a lot about deploring what's going on, I think, canceling the military, um, um, uh, the, the military exercises, which would be a terrible photo op, was the right partial thing to do. Holding off on cutting off aid was also the right thing to do. I would say that anything that John McCain and Rand Paul agree on, like cutting off aid, has to be wrong. We want to win. We want to win elections. That's our goal. We want to win in 14. We want to win in 16. We want to win every election after that. Right now, what we're investing in is we're investing in building stuff. The stuff that we're building is the data science, the analytics to figure out which voters we need to be going after. The Democrats had a great game on the digital side of things in 2012. Can the Republicans, Charles, match them? I don't see why not. I mean, it's true that, you know, the smart young technologists are probably predominantly liberal, but there are enough of them. How many do you need? 50, 100? Uh, in the whole country that, that could actually help the RNC at least match what the DNC did. So I don't see why in principle that's going to be difficult. I think that the real story is what's the message, what's the best way to approach mm -hmm. young people and minorities. Uh, and it isn't only African American minorities, Hispanic, and interesting enough, of all the minorities you would have expected would have been sort of split evenly, would have been Asian Americans who have done extremely well economically, and yet they were overwhelmingly on the Democratic side. That actually is a puzzle that I think the RNC ought to think about and think about a message that would be more appealing. What are they missing in this? A broad Republican field that's sniping at each other with Hillary Clinton already the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. Having such a wide field, does it help the candidates or, or does it hurt them? But the other aspect of the Hillary Clinton story is that you know she's moving into the building of the Clinton Foundation, taking up a couple of floors. What are your thoughts on all of that? It's an association I'm not sure is going to help her politically. Look, if you and it's a perfect reflection of the persona of her husband. If you had to describe him as presidency, you'd say successful, charming, as always, roguish and sloppy, disorganized. And the, I'm talking about the way he ran his White House, the pizza at 3 a.m. The stuff where it was like, you know, a, a bull session in college, it went on and on. And that is reflected in the foundation, which has got, as the New York Times shown in a, showed in a very long article, the, the, these connections with mm. corporate, celebrity, with money, with people who are self-dealing is pretty messy. And I'm not sure if you're a candidate, despite Hillary's, you know, celebrity and how much she is adored by Democrats, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult association and it could be harmful. Production.